Hello, everybody. Andrew Blake from the DigitalAudioManual.com. Today, let's talk about some workflow ideas in Cubase 14. If you have Cubase 14, or any version of Cubase for that matter, I have to assume that one of the things that's important to you is you want to be producing music in one form or another, one style or another, but you have some music production software, so it would seem that the goal is to produce music. So the question I pose to you, are you producing music? Are you sitting down and creating something regularly, coming up with ideas? Are you able to follow those ideas through to the completion, where you actually have something to share in a finalized form of some kind? If you are producing music, how long does it take you to produce a song from beginning to end? And are you actually completing those tasks? Today, I want to share with you a few things that will hopefully lead you to exactly that goal. So let's dig in and look at a few of these things. In front of us, I have a project opened up in Cubase, and I have the lower zone opened up from this button up here in the upper right, and I have the chord tab selected, and I can click on any of these chords to get some kind of ideas. Here's the first thing. I wonder how many of you actually know this. As you're looking for chord ideas to start your song, do you understand that Cubase has the ability to analyze your own favorite songs that you listen to? And this applies to every style, any style. You can bring a song of that style into Cubase. You can just simply drag and drop that in from anywhere else you have on your computer. In front of me, I have one of the number one songs from the recent global charts. And again, this could be anything you're into or you think is what music is all about, I'm just going to choose this as a launching point. But after dragging this song into Cubase, I can now take this song, assuming that I've already created a chord track in my project, and you do that by going over to the inspector, right-clicking, add a track, and choose a chord track. Assuming I have this chord track in my project, I can take my song, drag it up to the chord track, and Cubase is going to analyze the chords from that song. And Cubase does a pretty good job figuring out what these chords are. I've tested this in other videos with other different kinds of songs just to see how close it gets. It's not absolutely 100% perfect, but it'll definitely get you in the ballpark. And that's pretty amazing in itself. But here's where it gets to be really something for all of us with all these chords that are already written in here. Of course, there's all kinds of presets if I want to choose some of their own predefined chords. There's a little button over here and it says assign from the chord track. If I click on this button, Cubase is going to look at the chord track, all the chords that are up here in the chord track, and it's going to take those chords automatically for me and reassign them to the chord pads. Anything that's a duplicate, for example, there's an A minor, another A minor, another A minor, it's going to understand that, and it's only going to put A minor down here one time. But it's going to analyze all these chords and reassign them onto our chord pads. Now I'm going to push this button. It gives me a little warning saying that if I do this, it's going to overwrite these existing chords. But I'm fine with that, so I say OK. Now we have four chords from this number one song assigned on our chord pads. There is no copyright for using chords from another song. That can't be copywritten. You have complete freedom to take somebody else's chords from anybody else that you listen to and then rearrange them and create something of your own. But by doing this, you are already walking in the shoes of whatever songwriter, composer, or producer that you admire or that you think is a qualified music genre worthy of your time, and now you have that loaded up on your chord pads with the click of a few buttons. I gotta tell you, this is pretty amazing technology that did not exist in the not too distant past. In previous times, you actually had to sit down and listen to this music, have some kind of training, to figure out what chords were what, see how they laid out in the song, in this case, every couple measures, and you had a bit of a long road ahead of you to do what we have just done in the span of a few seconds. Now I'm gonna go back up to this chord track. I'm gonna select all these chords. I'm gonna delete them, because that's all I want from my number one global artist. From this point, I'm gonna start doing my own thing. I'm just gonna borrow their ideas a little bit. Now from this point, you have a few choices on how you're gonna get your chords into your song to begin this process. We can click and drag them. We can hit the step writing button and just click on the chords and they'll write up in here. Or if we have a MIDI keyboard like I do, I can just play these chords until I get something the way I like it and just record it. That's the way I'm gonna go because I'm comfortable doing that. I'm gonna play a few chords till I get something I like. Then when I get something, I'm gonna hit the record button and put it in. Once I have that going, I'm going to get rid of this lower zone. At this point, if you haven't already, you want to go ahead and save your project. I hit Control S. Usually just put the date in here. I'll rename it later once I get further along. The next thing we want to do to move this process along, because we erased the original chords, we now want to take the set of chords that we've just created, drag those back up into the chord track. Once again, Cubase is going to analyze these chords. It's going to put the ones in now that I'm playing, the way that I've played it. So where do we go now? We have some basic chords. 
I can tell you, as someone that has analyzed probably thousands of songs, the one thing that most popular genres have in common, there's usually always a pad sound of some kind in the background. And it just so happens, Cubase has a VST synth dedicated to pad sounds. Let's find that, bring that in. I'm going to go up to instrument, and under the synth category, I'm going to find the one that says pad shop. Put that track in. You first load it up. The initial sound is not the most exciting, but there's a ton of presets. Before we check out those presets, let's take our newly created chords and add them to this pad shop track. Just drag them down in there, hit the presets. It doesn't take very long to transform us into something completely different. Let's try a few of these. As we're going through these, we can just hit the down arrow and it'll change the preset for us. Let's try this airy bell. That'll work for now. I'm going to choose that one. So with our new chords and our basic synth, we have something like this. Set up a Halion track. That's also included in Cubase. Add track. The Halion Sonic in here. So once again, let's add these chords to that. If you've been around here for a while or watched some of my previous videos, I've walked you through how to explode these chords. I'm going to select these chords and perform that process. That breaks those chords into four separate tracks, each with their own voices, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Some of the great navigation things we have with Cubase now, we can assign a shortcut, allows us to move the tracks around. Very simple. I opened up some other Hallion tracks dedicated to the strings, violin, the viola, the cello, the basses, all from the Iconica sketch, which is also included. I'm going to take these tracks, drag them down. Most of the orchestral instruments, their volume is governed by the modulation wheel. So if I double click on one of these instruments, opening it up in the key editor, I can go over to the left, select modulation. I click on my tools and select a pencil, and I can quickly start drawing in some modulation to get the volume up here. Like I mentioned before, I prefer to use the pre-gain to adjust my initial volume levels. You can do that right from this new fader over on the left. And pretty quickly we start getting some kind of ideas happening in our project. Now keep in mind, all of these sounds I'm playing right now are already included in Cubase. Pad Shop, the High End Orchestra, and we've created our chords from a mega hit song. So we know we have something going on here. Now the next thing, again, this is pretty common, just about any genre that you're going to listen to, you're going to need some kind of percussion or drums. And of course, the percussion or drums that you choose is going to have a pretty defining effect on the style of music that you're into. Obviously, hip-hop drums are going to sound a lot different than some other form of drums. These are choices that you make yourself, depending on what you're trying to produce. Let's go ahead and take advantage of the new drum machine that they put in here. I'm going to go to Add a Track. We actually have it right here that says Drum. And I'm going to start out with the Pattern Event, but we've already learned in previous videos that we can have MIDI on our Pattern Events as well. I'm going to add this track. I'm going to add some kind of preset to get it going. doesn't matter because I'm going to change it anyway. Go over to the editor. I'm going to change this first setting, the number of steps. I'm going to spin this all the way up to where it goes 128. That'll allow me to create an 8-bar pattern. I'm going to hit the randomized dice just to get something in here. I'm going to play my new drums along with my chords. And at this point, if I wanted to browse through some of these other presets, I could do that. For the sake of time, I'm just going to stay with these. If I go back to my editor and take that pattern and drag it up into the track, onto the drum track, I can see that the pattern fills out through these eight bars that I've created. Now, more than likely, you're going to want to process your drums, remix these drums, have some of them play at some time, and drop out at other times. Right in the upper left, tell it to convert this pattern into MIDI. So far, the sounds are still the same. Now we can take this pattern and perform another feature, not explode the chords, but go up to MIDI, tell it to dissolve the part, just take these defaults. Now we have all of our drum tracks split on into individual MIDI parts. We can do anything we want to. And the first thing I'm going to do is mute them all. A shortcut for that is hit Control A and then Shift M and everything gets muted. I'm going to right click, hit my mute tool, and then I'm going to start listening to these until I find the ones that I like. Right away, that works for me. And now we have this. Okay, so what else can we do to move our little project along? What if we take all our strings, solo those? But what if we try some of the modulators that are new in Cubase 14? Let's open up this lower zone. I'll choose the one that says Shaper. Maybe we can alter the volume on this. I'll hit the plus button to make a connection. I can go touch something. 
I can also just go to this list. All the parameters that are available on this track are here. I'll choose the volume, and then I get this kind of effect. I can move this dial around, try to catch different areas. I can change the modulation depth to get different sounds. I can go over to the note, change the value of this. They give us some predefined shapes down here. Let's click through these. That's interesting. Let's work with that a little bit. I hit this button that changes the polarity from bipolar to unipolar. We put that back in the mix, we get this. What else can we do to it? Let's try another tile here. Let's go to the LFO. You can always start by making some kind of change in the sound. For example, let's go to the EQ on this. What if I change the high pass down here? That's a great sound, but in the mix, I think it might get lost. Let's see if we can find something that's a little more drastic. What if we boost the EQ for something like this? That sounds good. So what we want to do is take this frequency now and have the LFO automatically move it back and forth like this. We need to identify what control that is. If I look down in the controls, you can see that this frequency knob is moving. That means I can come down to the frequency and get that same effect. So if we make a connection with that, come over and hit the plus button and hit this knob, then we get that movement. Now it's not moving where we want it, and it's moving too fast. So that's where we come over to this main knob and start adjusting that. To slow it down a little bit. We come over to the note value. There we go. Let's add that into the mix. That works. Let's take a look at our drums. Go back to all those tracks we dissolved. We have this so far. Let's zero in on this kick for a minute. Solo that. You can open the drum machine right up from the track still. Let's look at the pad effects. One thing they've given us that's new is this limiter. This really brings the drums alive. Let me adjust this on the kick. Brings out all those low tones. Let's turn on the bit crusher and see what we can do. Let's go up to some of these presets. Four bit crusher. Let's go through some of these. We get some major changes there. Bring down the mix. What about the decimation? Change the level around so it's not so drastic. And then put that back in our drums. Let's come down to this bongo sound. Let's put some reverb on that. Hit the reverb tab to bring it up. Adjust the level. Then our drums sound like this. Bring that back into the mix. Got sounds going everywhere. One more thing I'm gonna show you today. When we go to the media bay, of course we can choose our preset loops here, and there's all kinds of great sound effects in here. For example, let's come down to the hip hop vault, click on that, and you have this long list of various things. You can move down this list, find the options to say effects, click on some of these. If I find something interesting, I can just drag it out into the project and onto a track. I can go up and change the transpose if I want. But little sound effects from your sample packs really add a lot of extra dimension into your production. So be sure to take advantage of those. Here's where you want to start using your arranger track so you can start experimenting with different sections for your song. Create an arranger track by going to add track, come down to where it says arranger, switch to your pencil tool, draw whatever section you want. I like to draw some empty ones in as well. It gives me a little room to move around. Switch to the arranger view, add my empty section in here. And then I'm gonna create a couple of these sections that we've been working on and I can change them around a little bit. Add an empty one back in here and then flatten this chain out. At this point, you wanna grab your mute tool and mute some things out and experiment different layers of sounds. Let's start out with just our strings. I'll mute everything else out, leave our sound effect in. We'll bring in the bass part as it goes along here. And of course, what would really lift this all up one extra level 
if we put a vocal on top, we'll have to save something like that for another video. But even with our simple little instrumental, we have the beginning ingredients to get us going into creating something. And what you want to keep in mind, we put all this together in a little over 10 minutes. So sit back and have a listen to what we've done. But as you're listening to this, think to yourself, what can you do if you take 10 minutes and take some of these tools and ideas, put something of your own together, getting those ideas out of your head and bringing them into the reality of your own artistic creations. Here's wishing you many more inspirational moments to come in your own musical journey. I'll see you next time. Alright, it's going to wrap it up for today. As always, if you haven't already, click the link in the description of this video to learn how you can get access to the all-new Digital Audio Manual Preferred. It's the clear, step-by-step -step solution showing you not only the tips, but all the secret and typically never talked about features that'll take you to a higher level of using your software. If you've been searching for an all-in-one solution to take you from start to finish and learning Cubase and WaveLab and other music software, this is exactly what you've been looking for. So click on the link in the description and come and be part of the clear path to a better learning experience. So today we talked about how to optimize our workflow. We began using the chord track to analyze a hit song. We used the VST sense of pad shop and Hallian, come up with some basic pad and layers, brought in the drum track so we could get some drums and percussion going. We saw how to dissolve the parts. We got into using the modulators, the shaper and the sign to bring some motion onto our strings. We went back and listened to our drum sounds and started to bring in some of the limiting on the pad effects, brought in a sound effect, and then we use the arranger track to start creating different ideas and begin the process of building our completed song. And we will continue to move through all these different creative options and the tools we have available to us. As always, it's great to have you guys here, and I'll see you on the next video.